What you can see here is Lubuntu, the full LXQT flavor of Ubuntu. Many will recognize the desktop, but this one is a bit special. Because this Lubuntu instance is actually running on FreeBSD. FreeBSD has a Linux compatibility layer, which enables you to run Linux applications almost natively on FreeBSD. In this case, we are not running just a single Linux application, we are running a full Linux desktop environment. Let's open the terminal and let's see what we have. It says Linux Nomad BSD, which is the FreeBSD variant that I'm using right now. And this one emulates the Linux kernel 5.15. Now let's see how we can set this one up. But before we start messing around, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. As said, I'm using Nomad BSD here, so first let's restart and boot into Nomad BSD. And here we are inside Nomad BSD. Nomad BSD is a free BSD variant that runs from a USB drive. So this one is running from a USB drive right now. In a previous video, I showed you how you can install Nomad BSD on a USB drive. So if you want to run Nomad BSD yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. The first thing that we need to do here, we need to enable Linux support. And therefore, let's open the FreeBSD handbook. This is the FreeBSD handbook, and here we need to go to chapter 12. Linux binary compatibility. So first, let's open the terminal. Here it is. And now, we need to execute this command. Linux enable yes, so copy that. And here, write sudo and middle mouse click to paste it in and execute. Linux is enabled. Now, scroll all the way down to Debian Ubuntu debootstrap. So in this video, we want to install Ubuntu. And this is done using this debootstrap command. So let's copy that. And again, sudo and middle mouse click paste. Execute. It's already installed on my machine. To install Ubuntu, copy this command right here. And now again, sudo, paste. This will install Ubuntu 20.04 by the codename Focal inside the slash compat slash Ubuntu folder. I'm using Ubuntu 20.04 because at the time of recording, I had problems with the newer versions. I hope this will be fixed in the future, but for this video, we will continue with the Focal release. I already executed this command and I installed it inside the slash compat slash focal folder. So let's see what's inside. As you can see, inside here is my Ubuntu. Now the next step, we need to edit the slash etc slash fs tab file. Those are the folders that we need to mount inside Ubuntu. So let's copy all of that. Now inside the terminal, write sudo leafpad slash etc slash fstab. You don't need to use leafpad, you can use a different text editor. Here it is, and as you can see, I already pasted everything in, and I also adjusted the path to my focal folder instead of Ubuntu. And I'll save that, save and exit. And now just to be sure that everything works, let's reboot and then we'll continue. We are back, let's open the handbook again. Now we should be ready to log in into Ubuntu using this command right here. Let's copy that. And again, let's open the terminal. sudo middle mouse click. And again, let's fix the path to focal. And now let's log in, enter. And we are in, let's see what it is. So it's Linux, Nomad BSD, kernel 5.15. It's the same thing that we saw inside the Lubuntu desktop. Now we need to configure this one. So let's see what's next. We need to add the missing repositories. So let's copy that. And now I will exit Ubuntu and do sudo leafpad slash compat slash focal slash etc slash apt slash sources dot list. 
this is the file. And as you can see, I already pasted everything in. And let's go file and save. We can close that. And now let's log in back into Ubuntu. We should be able to do apt update. Perfect. And now let's install Lubuntu Desktop. I also added Debian frontend equals non interactive. This should install the Lubuntu desktop and also skip all prompts. So let's install it. Obviously, it was already installed on my machine. Now let's add a new user for the Ubuntu desktop. I will paste in the command. So the command is called user add, and we are adding the user called agile with a very secure password 1234. And the user agile should be part of the sudo group. Let's add it. Perfect. Let's see if we can log in as Agile. All right, who am I? I'm Agile, perfect. The Ubuntu part is ready. Now let's see how we can start the desktop. In order to start the Ubuntu desktop, or basically any desktop, we need to start the Dbus service. Dbus is a messaging service that most Linux desktops rely on. Those applications that are connected to Dbus can easily communicate with each other. Dbus usually works out of the box, but in this case we cannot run it inside Ubuntu here, because there is already a Dbus service running, and this is the FreeBSD Dbus service. So we need to find a way to use the Dbus service from FreeBSD instead the one from Ubuntu. And this is a bit tricky, because Ubuntu doesn't know that it is running on top of FreeBSD. In addition, on the FreeBSD side, the service does not allow connections from a different system. In this case, the Ubuntu instance is treated as a different system. First, let's make Dbus accept connections from different systems. Let's exit out. We don't need this one. And let's clear the terminal. There are two config files that we need to edit. The first one, user slash local slash share dbus1 session.conf. Let's edit this one. This is the file, and now down here, where it says authentication mechanism, you should see an auth section, and you probably have external in here, just write anonymous, as I have right now, because I already changed the file. And also, very important, you need to add the allow anonymous tag. So in the end, the file should look like this, then save the file and exit. The second one, inside the same folder, system.conf. Here again, same thing. Down where it says only allow socket credential space authentication, add again those two lines, auth anonymous and allow anonymous. Again, in my case, I already changed the file and this is how it should look like in the end. So save it, control S and exit. That's it. Now after the restart, Dbus should be able to accept connections from different systems. In our case, from Ubuntu. The next step is to start the Ubuntu desktop. The Ubuntu desktop should start on boot and replace the Nomad BSD desktop, this one right here. So first we will disable SDDM, the display manager for Nomad BSD. We want to disable this one, so write no and execute. And I will also disable init GFX. This is the service that figures out which graphics driver needs to be loaded. Usually you want this one, but somehow I couldn't get it work together with the Ubuntu desktop. That's why in this video, I will load the graphics driver manually. So let's disable this one. Perfect. Now we need a script that loads the desktop. And I already prepared one. It's called Start Lubuntu. Let's open it using Vim. Because now we can see colors. So this is a simple script. I will walk you through it. It starts down here. As said, first I'm loading the graphics driver, which is AMD GPU in my case. If you're using an Intel GPU, then call this command instead. Or if you're using NVIDIA, then of course load the NVIDIA driver. Then I'm exporting the start Lubuntu function, this one right here. Because I want to use this one inside Ubuntu, inside CH root, that's why I need to export it so I can access it afterwards. First it prepares the runtime directory, and then it logs in as the test user, which is in our case, Agile. Agile is the Ubuntu user that we previously created, and we want to log in as this one. Then we are just setting some environment variables that are necessary for the Ubuntu desktop. 
One of those is also the dbus environment variable, dbus session bus address. And this one we are getting from outside the function, actually from outside of Ubuntu. The export dbus launch command actually exports this environment variable. And since this one is exported, we can also use it inside Ubuntu, same as we use the start Lubuntu function. Then we are starting the X server, and this one will also run on FreeBSD, same as dbus. So dbus and the X server are running on FreeBSD, everything else is running on Ubuntu. And then we are starting Ubuntu using chroot, and we are starting the start Lubuntu function, this one up here. Again, this one then starts the LXQT session as the agile user. And that's about it. Let's save this one. Colon WQ. The script is ready, and now we just need to start it on boot. For this, I will use a cron job. It's really easy to do. Just write sudo cron tap e, sudo because I want to run it as the root user. So let's execute this one. It should open a Vim like text editor, and I already added one line in there. Just press I and you can write whatever you want. So the line should be at reboot and the path to the start Lubuntu script. And this should now start the script on reboot. That's basically it. Press escape. Now write a colon, WQ, enter. Installing new cron tab, done. The only thing left is restart. And here we are again. This is now Lubuntu running on FreeBSD. We also get the update notifier, and I will skip this one. Let's see the terminal again. Who am I? I'm Agile, that's right. And you name dash A. Yes, Linux Nomad BSD 5.15. Now, as far as I have tested, everything seems to work just fine. It's also very responsive. The only thing I couldn't get working is audio. Maybe I will fix that in the future, but at least video seems to work. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. And I also used this FreeBSD instance for a Windows versus Linux versus FreeBSD gaming performance comparison. If you want to see the comparison, the link to the video is up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.